Good afternoon. Welcome to the Preservation Association of Lincoln Brown Bag Lecture Series. My name is Eileen Burke, and I'm the coordinator of these brown bags. Um, the videotaping today is sponsored by the Historic Preservation Fund of the U.S. Department of the Interior through the Nebraska State Historical Society in the city of Lincoln, a certified local government. These brown bags are supported, supported by your membership in the Preservation Association of Lincoln, and we encourage you to join to support these activities. And you can join by going online to preservelincoln.org. Our speaker today is Ed Zimmer. Ed is the City of Lincoln Preservation Planner, a position he's held for 27 years. Before coming to Lincoln, Ed was a freelance architectural historian in Boston. He is native of Omaha and has an undergraduate degree from Lindenwood College and a PhD from Boston University. Ed's talk today is, and the winner is, it's the PAL Annual Awards for 2012. Please join me in walk, welcoming Ed Zimmer. Well, the anticipation, I know, is really, really great. And they tried to get that British comedian to do it, but he wasn't available this year. So once more, I will present the XX, or 20th Anniversary PAL Annual Awards. And I like to think of the locations of the annual meetings as almost an award in and of themselves, because PAL typically chooses a great location somewhere special and somewhere that might need some attention. And in fact, we've been a couple times to Whittier and in the two visits, this was the way before and we no longer have to use the middle and it looks beautiful in the after. Uh, but Whittier has been the location of a couple um, PAL annual meetings. Whitehall, which has made great progress uh, and then again is now kind of looking for, uh, I think the state has found some tenants for it and it, it is occupied again, I believe. Uh, but a key building in the northeast part of Lincoln, beautiful Whitehall Mansion. Wayaka Chapel was the site of an annual meeting and a great venue it is. And Trinity Lutheran, Trinity Methodist, um, down at 16th and A Streets, uh, a Lincoln landmark and a handsome building. And another repeat performance, the way the uh, courtroom in the U.S. Post Office and Courthouse, or more affectionately, Old Federal Building, now called Grand Manse, looked when Powell was meeting there in the early days and in the um, glorious renovation and uh, sprucing up that room as received uh, was also the site of an annual meeting. This year, uh, Powell met at Scottish Rite Temple, beautiful venue, uh, and entered my awareness, which it hadn't before, even though I wrote the National Register nomination many years before, that the relationship between that building and Lincoln High School, um, particularly in the entryway, uh, is extremely strong. And the more I visit either one of them, I see more and more of that beautiful three-arch doorway, marble staircase up and down, um, cross hall system, uh, both beautiful buildings. This year's awards uh, will begin with the Stewardship Award. This is the one that PAL awards for a long time project, project of an important building and a continuity of stewardship of that building. And among the projects in past years that have been honored uh, have been the um, Zemer House, Maple Lodge at 20th and Euclid, um, the Retzloff family for the preservation of the farm and particularly the remarkable limestone farmhouse of the 1860s out in Stevens Creek, the Joyo Theater and the continual care it's received by a succession of families uh, remaining the only uh, neighborhood single screen theater uh, in Lincoln, up in Havelock. And this year, the Stewardship Award goes to all of you. This is sort of like Time's Person of the Year when it said you, because this year, PAL's honoring the citizens of Nebraska. I think we could probably extend that to all visitors who've paid sales tax, lodging tax, or wheel, or um, gasoline tax going across the state. Uh, the Nebraska Capital Commission and Bar of Mirren Hacker as architects for the State Capital Masonry Restoration Project. This is a project that dates in its funding back to 1997 and um, in active work 
a couple of years after that, and it's just been finished. Uh, it's been a project that was underway, and this is there's no shame in this at all. In fact, I think there's glory longer than it took to build the building, but the building um, was built over a 10-year period, 1922 to 32, and this project is just finished after um, almost 13 active years, and I think funded 15 years of work. But this is a building that is well worth that, and I think the citizens are honored because the support the project had through all of those years, uh, renovating our greatest landmark in the state and really one of the great buildings of the world. Some of the work in progress included, if you remember, wrapping the whole building in scaffolding to address issues that were discovered uh, up and down the, the height of the building. Uh, and at that time took the opportunity to also renovate the sower um, in a great restoration at the very top. Um, I probably should warn that, that if you experience vertigo, some of these images probably are not something you should look at. Um, I don't know, is that a V rating? I think is what we would. Um, but the work had to go up and down the, the, the whole height of the building, um, not only addressing uh, the, the pointing of, of individual stones, but even supporting the weight of the limestone shaft, which hadn't been fully and properly anchored to the steel frame uh, of the building. So there's tremendous work up and down the height of the building. Shelves or anchors were inserted at various floors to, to bear uh, more securely the, the weight of the beautiful limestone skin to that steel skeleton that holds it. Uh, work all the way up the top of some of the um, little corner rotundas or um, domes atop the, the corner stairs. Great views. Must have been distracting to work up there. Mm -hmm. And now, in the kind of condition it should be uh, for one of the not only premier landmark in the state, uh, but really one of the great buildings in the world. These are Sam Kessler's recent photos. Some of that work included, the, one reason for the time frame was there was discovery along the way of, of what some of the issues were that challenged various parts of the building and the entry stairs on each side had to be taken apart, reassembled. Um, they had uh, brick cores that were sponges and soaking up water and um, then not supporting properly limestone around them. So very significant work. And then putting it back together. We don't very often get to see arches reassembled, um, but, but here's one in progress uh, on that, uh, that curved support, which is how they did it. That's, that's how you have to build an arch. And then when you've got it all in place, almost magically, but actually gravity working in your favor once your stones are good. Uh, these are before, aren't they? That's the cracked. That's the not cracked. Um, so sometimes, and going back to the quarry in Indiana where the, the limestone had come from, very carefully selecting to match wherever new stones had to be inserted. I think of this project sometimes I think restoration is looked at as, as kind of rote, that you just put back what was there. But I think obviously this project took not only technical skill and great construction craft, but I think real creativity on the part of both Barbara and Hacker and the staff um, at the Capitol, uh, Bob Ripley, Tom Casper, and now um, pleased that there's another generation of architect uh, joining the staff in Matt Hansen. Um, because the problems that would come up and then the solutions, the sources of material, how to rediscover the building, both in research and in looking at the building, and then figure out how to put it back together uh, even better than it was, I think has involved tremendous creativity. And finally, finishing off some of the copper long-term permanent roofing. Permanent, like anything on this earth, it will last as long as you use great materials and take care of it and replace it when it has to be done. But I think wonderful crafts involved, creating beautiful roofs so that we can look down on scenes like this with your seat belt securely fastened. And the building that not only displays the work of 
um, great architect and architectural firm um, in Bertram Goodhue and his successors, but also the sculptors, mosaicists, painters, um, all the building trades that went into establishing a fabulous building. And then in the inscriptions and the program behind the decoration, uh, even the work of a philosopher and poet, Hartley Burr Alexander. I've got to go stand up at this level and look at this because it doesn't, every, every angle in this building you see something new and something more spectacular. So for the completion of the masonry restoration project, PAL honored the Capitol Commission represented by Bob Ripley Barb Marin Hacker, represented by Dan Wirth, and the Citizens of Nebraska, represented by Gary Martin, <laughs> who also did a wonderful job chairing PAL's uh, awards committee this year. Gary didn't know he was standing up there as one of the honorees, but I really think um, the citizens do deserve this award as well. Next category, commercial and institutional rehabilitation. And this is one that um, PAL created to separate some of the categories of great work that goes on in the community and to identify those projects that uh, had a, either were commercial industrial scale buildings or that the use of the project today um, is commercial. It hasn't actually been a requirement that a building be illustrated in a postcard to get this award, but it, it has happened time and again with projects like Lincoln Station, um, the old commercial club, which became Crane River, and then the Gallup building that had a wonderful, particularly interior rehab of the top floor uh, dining room ballroom, the Federal Security Building at 13th and N, and then a few buildings that never quite made postcards but were great uh, buildings, the old Beatrice Creamery, now known as the Creamery in Haymarket or substitute for a postcard being illustrated in an early picture book of Lincoln Muni Pool Building here as the winter bathhouse. Uh, this was not swimming in winter, but rather uh, in early years, this was 1923 publication, uh, Muni Pool was flooded in the winter and, and a, a nice sheet was created for ice skating. And Parks Department was honored for um, their rehabilitation of the Muni Building a few years ago or Prescott School. In, uh, in here, LPS was, was honored on the rehabilitation of that building. This year, the award went to Carolyn Howard for a project called Good Times Gifts and Home Decor, Good Things Gifts and Home Decor at 3008 O Street. Uh, and this was a, uh, originally a residential building, um, but had fallen to hard times, uh, was used as, I think, office space and sort of boarding house. It was an early 20th century building, grand uh, American Foursquare with a wraparound porch uh, that stood on a prominent site uh, at 30th and O, but was not in its um, good condition when uh, Carolyn Howard bought it for her business. Uh, she's based in uh, southeast Nebraska, Beatrice area, but wanted a branch in Lincoln and took on this project of a building that needed just about everything. She um, cooperated with the city and made it a Lincoln landmark and obtained a special permit um, to um, make some of the adjustments that were necessary to install the business in the project. It has commercial zoning uh, and then went at the uh, multitude of tasks it took to put this building back together, taking off the bathroom that had been inserted in the front porch um, putting back on a good porch foundation and then working um, step by step and everything inside and out uh, needed help on this building until she had really put together a um, wonderful project to house her business on O Street. Look at some of the interior work. Uh, it had a few survivals inside, uh, principally the staircase uh, and some pocket doors and a stained glass window. This staircase shows up time and again in Carolyn's work, putting it back together into um, 
a home for her business. And again, O Street has a beautiful residential building, but serving a commercial purpose. Uh, the ornate window up in the attic was one of the few survivors of, of the, the original trim on the building, and it was carefully reinstalled. And I think we have a, a wonderful commercial project, um, but um, keeping that residential presence that once was the presence along um, inner O Street. And so for her renovation of this landmark Lincoln property, Carolyn Howard was awarded, represented by uh, her uh, office manager, Anita Bartles, at the um, reception a couple Sundays ago. Separately, Pal honors residential rehab, because it's nice to give awards, and having more categories is better than having fewer categories. Past projects have included uh, houses like Frank Wood's house um, on Sheridan Boulevard, much smaller houses like um, Reese O. Stakes' bungalow, sort of our, maybe our best example of a Chicago bungalow in Lincoln, um, George Berlinghoff's um, House of the Teens on 28th and N Street. Lily Blaze's rescue of a lost Queen Anne building down on Euclid. Uh, and the wonderful uh, Little Atwood House on South 17th Street. Yes. <laughs> or out in Lancaster County, um, the Sartori's renovation of a um, kind of free classical Queen Anne uh, out in Stevens Creek. This year, the award went to Eric Hasselbach, one of the owners, co-owners of the George Woods House at 1445E. And to put this house in context, I have to go back to one of the earlier award winners because we know, I think, well two of the Woods brothers' houses, Frank's house on Sheridan and his brother Mark's house up on Sheridan and South Street, large houses where the Woods brothers were demonstrating here's what you ought to buy our land and build uh, in our neighborhoods. And these both celebrate Sheridan Boulevard. But there was a third active brother in the companies in Lincoln, and that was George. And George stayed home, sort of, uh, in a 19th century house down by the Capitol. And a few years ago, I put this in the Near South tour book, but I find I don't think I ever took a photograph of it because it wasn't very photogenic. Uh, it had been broken into apartments, and it still is apartments, but it had been neglected over the years. With a change, with a succession, an inheritance succession, change in ownership, um, Eric took on this project. I knew this would be an interesting project when I got a phone call from Eric a couple years ago saying, did I know the source of a specific type of Kansas brick that had been used on the deck? I had never heard of that kind of brick, much less knew a source. And then he could rattle off the many brickyards and salvage places he had already looked and hadn't found it yet. And I knew he was on a, on a faithful search to do all he could for this building. He did find his brick and put back together. This is a house that combines its 19th century uh, like ornate shape and some of the trim, then with George Woods' uh, modifications to it. It was built about 1889 by a builder named Barris, uh, and then was bought by Woods, George Woods, in the early 1890s. He was the second owner and occupied it for about three decades. And so we see his modifications over time um, to that earlier house. And it has some wonderful detail, particularly in a lot of, and I think this must be Woods's era. This isn't 1889. This it looks more like uh, 19 teens, maybe even early 1920s. And a, a house I think well worth looking at and now worth photographing as well and celebrating uh, the renovation of this significant house that then completes our set of um, the three principal Woods Brothers 
houses in Lincoln. Uh, the award went to Eric for his great renovation work. Integration of old and new is a category that wasn't on the awards list at the very beginning, but was added because some projects uh, that, that really enhance the community and, and support the preservation um, of Lincoln's heritage aren't purely preservation projects. They're buildings that didn't have, offer an opportunity for preservation or really were reinforcing um, a neighborhood by a project that may have combined elements of an old building and new rather than strictly being um, a, a restoration or sometimes even not a, a rehabilitation. And those have included projects like F Street Rec Center uh, where the old fire station on the right and the old corner grocery store on the left um, were combined in a, really, in a new reinterpretation with that um, center stair tower at the middle frankly trying from the beginning to be a combination of old and new but preserving um, and building on it. Uh, or even a brand new building like one landmark center um, that I think really has enhanced Lincoln Mall and the connection between the, that historic connection between the capital, state government, and county city complex, local government that really has been embedded in our city plan since 1867 uh, in a handsome building that does its um, urban role there on Lincoln Mall. Uh, the very, to a very subtle project like the link that put together two landmark houses, the uh, Pace House on the left and the Lally House on the right into an office building to serve uh, Voices of Hope Agency with a link that I think no one sees going by, which was their idea. Uh, they needed the space of the buildings combined and put them together in a very uh, subtle and dignified way. Or a project like Sawmill Building, uh, where a little um, early warehouse farm implement building originally that for many years was uh, part of the uh, Hoppy Lumber Complex uh, was not only renovated in nice fashion, but gained a almost sculptural deck um, and dock that uh, adds to its vitality and gives that north edge of Haymarket uh, a lovely, well-used building. This year, the award went to Speedway Properties and Champion Olson Architects for their work on the Salvation Army building or really Salvation Army complex in Haymarket. Building that has a complex history, like Haymarket itself, uh, with an old hotel building once st that stood on the corner of 8th and P, that'd be the one with the corner doorway, that became attached and part of the Granger Brothers grocery complex when they built the warehouse on the right hand side, uh, I think that was 1907. To the left hand side of the old hotel, uh, that had been converted into part of the warehouse here was the old livery stable attached to the hotel. And it was that livery stable that blew up um, totally in, um, I think, 1937. There's a great photo inside the building now showing it in rubble. Um, and 19, in that era, um, Davis and Wilson then added to the old grocery um, complex the building that stands between the two tall warehouses, the little three-story portion. And then in the 1960s, Bill Schlebitz for Salvation Army replaced the old uh, former hotel on the corner with one of the most sympathetic warehouse district buildings that I think probably anybody built in the 1960s. This would be one of those that I think we could do the best west of the Mississippi, east of the Rocky Mountains, and challenge anybody to find a more sympathetic building that had been um, added to a not yet recognized warehouse district uh, than Schlevitz's wonderful uh, little corner building for Salvation Army for their store and rehab center. Uh, if you remember when Haymarket was getting its start, um, Salvation Army was, was still using the building and um, was not fully integrated yet to um, the renovation of Haymarket. Now with uh, restaurants and shops on the lower floors of the, of the complex, um, offices um, and a great business incubator on the upper floors, um, and ongoing work on the, on the um, uh, tower building, uh, 
Um, we've got a wonderful, um, vibrant part of Haymarket again, and even uh, plans to come. Um, beautiful addresses written into the stone of the early warehouse. And eventually, plans um, will incorporate the uh, garage area, and then they'll maybe be eligible for a future old and new award, but that one's not done yet. Um, so um, Kurt Olson representing Champion Olson Architects and Clay and Craig Smith representing Speedway Properties um, accepted the award for the Salvation Army Complex. Great Commoner Award uh, was established using the nickname of William Jennings Bryan, um, our great commoner. Uh, and was recognized, is intended to recognize particularly preservation education and efforts that uh, spread the message and spread the, the joy, um, like these brown bag programs. Uh, I think sort of these would be the premier example of the great commoner, uh, would be these brown bags. Um, and past projects have honored Heart of Lincoln Project and education, uh, particularly for the real estate uh, sector, on the values. Uh, and opportunities in the heart of Lincoln for uh, residences. That great poster of Lincoln doorways was one of their projects. But behind that, there was also a lot of realtor training uh, that was very important. Um, the African American Studies Project uh, and um, efforts that grew out of that, and particularly honoring um, this lady, um, Ruth Folley, who was one of our greatest sources you know, in that research work and then working um, in that project, uh, my interns, Kathy Caldwell, and my colleague, uh, Abby Anderson, uh, that uh, produced slide talks and books and tours, and I think an ongoing project um, that has enriched our understanding of Lincoln. Uh, Doug Beals for his ongoing advocacy and education about Whittier uh, here on one of those tours before it was the uh, joyful place it is now, but Doug was always joyful about Whittier, even when um, no one else was. And this year, um, honoring Bob Puschendorf, who could receive an award in any one of these categories. Um, he lives in an historic house. I don't know. We could figure out a way to do integration of old and new. Um, that would be Bob himself, probably. Bob has been Bob is now the Associate Director and Deputy State Historic Preservation Officer at the Historical Society, where he's been in the Preservation Office since 1982, beginning in the um, grants and um, fiscal side of the office, and now never has been able to get away with that from that, because now as head of the Preservation Office, um, Bob does the annual budget for that office, the, state, the federal grants, um, passes some of those through gratefully to the certified local governments. Um, I think if we look at Bob's career at the Historical Society, uh, he's always um, broadened our view of what's historic and what's, what's memorable about our state with his personal interests and his encouragement of a broadening of all of our interests. Um, he's shown us the importance of standard oil to the development of the state and roadside gas stations and all kinds of roadside art as well as the roads themselves, sponsoring historic uh, highway studies. It's collaborated very well with the Nebraska Department of Transportation. I'm working on renaming it from Department of Roads. Um, on both um, archaeology projects, but also collaborating on things like the Spans in Time publication um, about historic bridges in Nebraska. And I'm particularly thrilled to look forward to, this is Bob being thrilled as he receives the award from Gary, <laughs> the um, upcoming publication this fall of a book focusing, book by Bob, focusing on the post office murals um, and uh, the WPA murals in the post office across Nebraska. It's a wonderful um, topic that he's supported in National Register nominations in the past, but now uh, we'll put it on our bookshelves um, of these wonderful WPA murals uh, in Nebraska post offices. We could also mention his advocacy for strong legislation about preservation in Nebraska, which is an educational effort of a different kind, um, but certainly an educational effort. 
um, and about the economic benefits of preservation. Uh, and then I'd have to stop because there is a time limit on the program. City Center Award is one that Powell instituted to honor projects that might or might not be buildings, but that added to the vitality of the city and supported um, the kind of activity in the core. I think one of Lincoln's great distinguishing characteristics is we have both a strong downtown and strong neighborhoods adjacent downtown. We haven't abandoned either the center of our city and we don't lose uh, quality as we move out um, through the old neighborhoods and out to the newer edges of the city. And so projects like the Burkholder Project, not just for uh, the renovation of the old Wood Woods Brothers building, but more for the creation of that kind of art colony in one building uh, that Anne has achieved. Farmer's Market, um, a place that is also a time. Um, Saturday mornings from May to October, 7th Street and P Street and up around the corner uh, onto the through Iron Horse Park and up around the corner onto A Street is a special place in Lincoln. It can be special at other times of the week and the year, but in different ways. But when Farmer's Market is there, it's sort of the heart of Lincoln at those moments. Um, this, I think, was July Jam. And the late and maybe, maybe someday to be um, renewed uh, holiday parade. And this year, Powell honored Lincoln City Libraries and particularly Bennett Martin Public Library for the contribution that the library brings to the heart of the city. Um, there are old postcard views of the prior uh, library on that site at 14th and N Street. This is the 1902, what we would call the Carnegie Library. And there are even postcards of the 1960s Bennett Martin Library. What I say about Bennett Martin is that everything I love about it is inside the walls. <laughs> and there are those who think I should learn to appreciate the architecture, and maybe I will, but I haven't gotten there yet. But inside the walls, uh, wonderful services, uh, wonderful reading programs, the Heritage Room that celebrates Nebraska art, um, authors, um, a reading program that now has passed its 200th um, monthly reading by Nebraska poets um, and authors, and just a very special place. Bennett Martin and the City Library System are currently engaging in a study of um, how to energize and uh, I think we, I hope, um, replace uh, with a new um, center library and where that would be and how that will occur um, is the purpose of the study this year. Um, and I think we should watch for the activities around that study, contribute to it, um, add our views on the place, the beloved place of libraries in this community um, and of a central library um, serving the, the, the whole city and the center of the city. Um, Pat Leach, the director on the right, and Julie Bino, um, of the Bennett Martin, um, representing the staff and, and appreciating it for the whole staff, uh, received the award from Gary Martin. To go along with the responsibility of being PAL president, I think the only privilege that the PAL president gets is they get to pick one of the awards each year. Um, and this year chose Dr. Richard Hay who was a great contributor to so many cultural activities uh, in Lincoln. He died uh, a few months ago. Um, Dr. Hay was a retired dentist, um, but principally we thought of him as the on-call photographer for almost any Lincoln event, um, and particularly a downtown event or a cultural event. Um, the gentlest of photographers and the gentlest of gentlemen um, man who demonstrated living well, uh, lived downtown in the uh, University Towers, the old Stewart Building, um, was active in LEAD events and Sheldon events and PAL, um, traveled, shared uh, his photographic talents with not only PAL but uh, his church, St. Paul, downtown, um, and really it was just a joy to be around 
uh, great loss to Lincoln's cultural life and really just kind of our civic life and was honored uh, with the President's Award this year. And these would be, he didn't copyright his photos, so I may blend somebody else's photos sometimes with Dr. Hayes, but uh, this was the kind of service he gave, um, photographing the annual events, the tours, the walks. I don't know what Elle magazine might be able to do without Dick Hay, because he was at all those events. And I think later, possibly, other decay photos will come up. The big award each year uh, is the Helen Busalis Award, as named for our late beloved mayor. Um, Helen is not only the mayor when the preservation ordinance was passed in Lincoln um, in 1980, but was a very active preservationist uh, through her terms as mayor. Afterwards, was honored by the National Trust uh, with their premier award, and even beyond that, was honored by the National Trust as a trustee of the trust. She was one of the, the small um, board of trustees that operated the trust, as well as serving a similar role for AARP. Um, I had called her early on. Well, she kept calling me before PAL existed saying that among my responsibilities as preservation planner was creating a citizens organization. And I would say, Mrs. Mayor, because it was pretty clear she still was, even though she wasn't, and I never quite had the honor of working for her in the city when she was mayor, but we, neither one of us thought that really mattered because she kept telling me I had to do this. I didn't create PAL alone, I, was, I helped in getting it started, but it was in response to Helen saying, this has to be done. Uh, when I called her to ask if we could borrow her good name, her great name, for the premier award, she graciously granted, I said, all we really requested was her permission to use her name. Every year after that, she would call me in the spring and say, how much do I send for that award and the award program, and every year, until um, just a year or two before her death, she would send a very significant gift to PAL in support of the awards and support of the whole PAL program. Now, Gary told me this year to put together in the program, um, I'll show a few of the past awards winners, uh, Jerry Bergeron, um, Keith Sawyer. The year we surprised um, Joe Gutzel, who was president, um, and by a bait and switch and telling her it was somebody else, uh, she didn't know until the moment of the award, which is why Matt's looking properly, so pleased with himself, he should. Yes. <laughs> and this year, they said, Peter Bleed, great Lincoln archeologist, just retired from UNL, and I was putting together the Peter Bleed show, um, as requested. And then at the award ceremony, Gary interrupted at that point and said, uh, no, we, we have to put something else on the screen. Now we have to do a little switch. I know nothing. And so it becomes Becky's show. There goes one way. Hi, I'm Becky Martin, president of PAL, and we pulled another switch. And as Ed was saying, um, he's the honoree this year, and that's why I'm speaking instead of him. And um, he's the Helen Busalis Award winner, winner. He was nominated by somebody outside of the board that recognized all the outstanding uh, work Ed does in preservation. We know that's his job title, but he does quite a bit above and beyond, and of course, adding his personality to it all makes it special. And here's Ed doing his usual, getting ready for whatever presentation he's going to be doing, and he does, does it so well. And Gary appreciated all his input over the years on the award winners, even though this year he thought he was giving input on one award and he did not. He's been supportive, as he said, of this organization from the start. It's clearly a nonprofit, separate organization from the city, 
but he has been there to guide us, answer questions, give us background on things that we needed. He informs many, informs many of us about all the history that goes on in Lincoln. Um, I don't think we can begin to list all the groups that he's done little history talks for. Um, he's done it on buses, in cemeteries, in neighborhoods, in buildings. Bicycles. And bicycles. I, yes, I did go on that bicycle event, too. He's taught at the University of Nebraska Lincoln courses, of course, and then with the Haymarket area, given uh, third or fourth graders tours of the Haymarket history. This is the uh, Hudson Cabin that was moved recently from the state fairgrounds out to Pioneers Park. And if you haven't seen that, that's a special, it's in a really special location now, I believe. And Ed with his, I don't know if he was here with his historic preservation hat or his school board member hat, maybe both. And uh, it's moved out there near the schoolhouse so that the school kids can use it too as part of their lesson. He's always advocating preservation, whether it be to guide the Historic Preservation Commission or just individuals and in finding the history of their house. Either he has it or he helps find it or he helps them get started in looking for themselves. But he's always there for us. He's also a very good advocate of this program because through his grants, through his um, assistance and guidance, we're able to do these brown bags here through City TV. And Pal greatly appreciates that. He's also guided in the writing of many um, publications, and it's, many of us always uh, enjoy hearing him speak, but he does a very awesome job with his writing skills, too. And this is the book, um, Lincoln Black and White, that he mentioned earlier. And of course, a guide to Wayuka Cemetery. So hopefully, though, you can see one or more of his live tours. They are awesome. And um, if you haven't been on them, um, you need to see it. And if you've seen it, each one's usually a little bit unique, a little bit different, a little bit more knowledge on what's going on, maybe a different route. And he's done the walking tour booklets, or at least helped guide those tour booklets to be printed for near south and other neighborhoods in town. And here he is on his walking tour outside the chapel. This was a rather big one. I think time all said and done, we were over 100 on that one. But I've been on them when it's been about four of us in the rain. So rain or shine, Ed is there. He's very informative. And not only does he give tours of Wayuka, he's worked with school children, with uh, Civil War history, with middle school students, and looking up the history on each of the war veterans that served in the Civil War that are buried at Wayuka. And there he is in the sunshine, ready to go, no matter what the conditions. We've had some interesting ones. We've had alley tours by Ed and Jim McKee, actually, the two of them together, kind of tag team. And so um, if you're not sure if we're honoring Ed or Jim today, uh, PAL's website has a place you can go to to uh, differentiate the two. I don't know if you knew that. And there's Ed on a walking tour. It appears to be Woods Park neighborhood. I think we're the only one that put out a hot pink booklet for the first printing. And there he is giving a tour of the Taylor, Taylor Cottage in Woods Park and telling us all about the style of architecture. And not only just the building itself, he always tells a little bit about the family that lived there. And Ed is, understandably so, our Helen Buscellis Award winner for 2012. And we, is there one more picture? And we greatly appreciate all his efforts he does above and beyond his job description. And there he is, yes, this is a really lovely slide with his children. And I believe we have Emily and LJ on the right, and next to them Andrew, and on the near side here on your left would be Thomas. Very good. I do pretty good. But I receive his Christmas poem every year, too, which helps me keep things straight, I think. Ed, would you like to continue? And thank you very much for all you do. And that is the class of 2012 with the surprised and slightly embarrassed 
self in the middle. Um, wonderful turnout. We had a great tour of the Scottish Rite Temple building. Um, generous that, that we could uh, visit that building that um, I think is, is a special place and more, more open and more receptive than people sometimes recognize. Um, and they've sponsored some open houses for Centennial Mall and will be, um, I think, a key um, piece in the renovation of Centennial Mall. So it was great to be in that building, another good choice by Powell of an annual meeting site and a lovely annual meeting. I think I'll be pretty safe um, if I'm asked to help with next year's program that mm -hmm. they won't pull this switch on me again. <laughs> and with that, I think we'll see if there are questions about this week's pro this month's program. Not, not the kind of program that other than you could challenge any of the choices made, of course, by Pal, but thank, thank you.